Hello, this is the next video in a playlist that I'm calling Parameter Estimation. And we're going to look at the Cremere Rao lower bound. Some people call it an inequality as opposed to the lower bound. I kind of waffle back and forth. Now the setting is we have several unbiased estimates, estimators for our function of the unknown parameters called GF data. Since they're all unbiased, you know, they're equal in regards to that criteria. So then we want to find the estimator, the unbiased estimator, that has the smallest variance associated with it, and we pick it. But there's a, then there's the question of, is there another unbiased estimator out there that's even better than the current one we have? Well, then you start asking, well, is there a limit to what we can expect to see? And the answer is yes. There's a lower bound. There's a lower limit. On, on the variability of these unbiased estimators. And matter of fact, if you come up with an unbiased estimate that equals that lower bound, you know you have the best estimator. You can't find an unbiased estimator with smaller variance. And that's the Cremere Rao lower bound. In it, we use the Fisher information. Now some people say number, Fisher's information number. Um, I tend to not say that. And the formula for Fisher's information is this. And here's a big warning that I have, and I actually don't like it that some books do this, is they leave off this subscript. Without it, you don't know if it's the Fisher information from a sample size n or the Fisher information of sample size 1. And so I always like to put that little subscript so there's no doubt. But if you know it for one, then and you can multiply it by n and get the Fisher information for sample size n. We're not going to cover these in the uh, two previous videos in this playlist. We calculate some examples using both of these formulas. Now, I just uh, be careful about the subscript. Now I'm going to pass you off to a, a couple videos that I have that explains the Fisher information in more detail. And in these videos, we talk about the regularity conditions that have to be met to use this and one of them is being able to pass the uh, derivative sign uh, past the integral, in and out of the integral. That's one of the regulatory conditions and in most of the common uh, distributions that we use that these are easily met. So here's the theorem. So let xi be distributed with this distribution. We're taking a sample of size n and we're assuming that these regular regularity conditions are met and, and again see the videos now let t be an unbiased estimator of this function g of theta then the variance associated with our estimator has to be greater or equal to this uh, number here and i say number because there's no randomness in here once we take a sample size n n is fixed the unknown parameters fixed, so this is a number. So any unbiased estimator has to be greater than or equal to this. And so if we can find an unbiased estimator that has a variance equal to this lower bound, you know that we have the best estimator. So here's a proof. First we're going to assume that the variance of T and the Fisher information are finite. Otherwise, it's trivially true, right? If this is infinity, well, it's always bigger than whatever this is. And if the Fisher information is infinite, then this number is zero. Well, and the variance is always greater than or equal to zero. So it becomes trivially true. So we're going to assume they're finite. <clears throat> Let x be distributed with this distribution here. Uh, and we're taking a sample size n. And because it's a, a PDF, <clears throat> or probably a mass function, it integrates or sums to 1. And that's what this says. Now notice this is a vector. So this is the joint distribution. And so we have to integrate it over each x. And that's what this represents. But it has to you know, equal 1, right? Because we're dealing with probability. Now if we take the derivative of both sides with respect to theta, the derivative of 1 is 0, right? And then the derivative of this is whatever it is. But assume we can pass that integral sign in here. So now look at this. So the, the integrating the derivative of our joint distribution is 0. Okay, That will come back to that. 
So now let's look at the expected value of the derivative of the log likelihood, which is defined to be this, right? It's expected value. So you take this quantity times the density associated with it, right? The x's. Integrate over all possible values. And this is the expected value. But notice the derivative of a log is 1 over this, right? And which will cancel with that. And then it's times the derivative of this. So this is what we get. Remember that cancels and then we're just left with the derivative of this f of x. But this is 0, we just said, right? So the expected value is 0. Now let's look at the expected value of this product. We have our estimator times this derivative of the log likelihood. Now, that expected value means take this quantity, which is here, times its density, the x's, integrate over all possible values. But again, the derivative of a log is 1 over f, you know, which then will cancel with that, and we're left with the derivative of f of x, which is this. Right? Everything else is the same, except for this piece. Now, under regularity conditions, we can pass that derivative outside the integral. But this is the expected value of t of x. Well, we know it's unbiased, so this piece has to equal g of theta. And then if we take the derivative of g of theta, then we just, we'll just generically call it g prime of theta. Now let's put all these pieces together. So the covariance between this and this is it's equal to the expected value of the product minus the product of the expected values. Well, this piece we just calculated, right? This piece we just calculated to be zero. This, it's, of course, it's unbiased, so it's g of theta. So this is 0, and this we just calculated. So the covariance is g prime of theta. And as a reminder, the correlation between x and y, and correlation is covariance divided by the square root of the product of the variances, is always between minus 1 and 1. <clears throat> now if we take the absolute value, we can see the absolute value is always less than or equal to 1. Then we we'll kind of ignore this side. Well, that's what we do here. So we have the covariance, which is this, right? And we take the absolute value, so that's this piece. But if we multiply this to this, then that's what this represents. Now, we want to, since it's the square root of the product, it's the product of the square roots. So we can divide this piece to this side, and then we square everything. And then this comes down, that squared, and then, of course, this is the Fisher information, which is this. Well, that's what we wanted to show, that the variance associated with the estimator is always greater than or equal to this number. And the proof is, is, is given. Now, one, a few notes, two notes, that if our function of our unknown parameter is just the parameter itself, then the variance associated with any unbiased estimator of the parameter is greater or equal to this number, right? Because this numerator is the derivative of theta, which is just 1. And then also, if the, the variance of our estimator equals this lower bound, it's the best we can do. Then, then the, the estimator, the unbiased estimator, is a UMVUE. Uniformly Minimum Variance Unbiased Estimator. And I say A because there could be another unbiased estimator that also equals this lower bound. It's possible. However, Lehman Shafe says that if T is complete for its distribution, then it's unique, and it is the unique UMVUE. Well, anyway, that's all I have for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed that. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.